Clipper City Brass Quintet.
Thank you all so much for that warm welcome. It's great to be here at the Kennedy Center this evening. This is our debut performance at the Kennedy Center, so we're really honored to be here and we're excited that you guys have chosen to spend the evening with us, at least the first part of it. Um, we have a great program for you guys today. Uh, a lot of um, different styles of music, but these are all composers from North America. And we even have a world premiere performance this evening, which we're really excited about, a piece by Frank Gulino, <coughs> who's actually here in the audience somewhere. I'll tell you more about him a little bit later in the program. Um, that last piece is by a Canadian composer named Morley Calvert, who uh, is a very dear friend of the brass instruments. Um, and this particular piece was written uh, to sort of illustrate an incredibly beautiful mountain range up in Canada, the Mono Region Hills. Um, the next piece that we're going to play is sort of a completely different uh, story in terms of the composer. Um, you, you may not have heard of Moondog, but he was actually a very prolific American composer um, who spent most of his life living what some people might call an alternative lifestyle. Um, he was voluntarily homeless. And um, he spent uh, his, almost his entire life dressed as a Viking, if you can believe that. It sounds like a pretty good life to me. Um, but th this was basically his identity, both as a person and compositionally, I think you can see that this wit really shines through this sort of spirit of life. Um, Moondog spent, um, I think, uh, over 20 years on the streets of New York City. He was known as the Viking of, I believe it was 7th Avenue, and was friends of uh, many famous musicians such as Charlie Parker, uh, Miles Davis, and others uh, during the middle 20th century. Very interesting character. Um, we think you'll enjoy this tune, um, Pastoral. It's very beautiful, uh, sort of like this evening we have tonight. Um, we'll follow that immediately by a piece by a, a Maryland composer, uh, Kevin McKee, who's a friend of ours. Um, this piece, Escape, is very exciting. It has a lot of markings in the manuscript that refer to volcanoes. We're not really sure why, but sometimes you, it, it's helpful to think of uh, escaping a volcanic eruption uh, when listening to this music. Hopefully you won't feel like, you know, too much that way, but uh, we hope you enjoy these next two pieces. Thank you. 
Well, sometime last month, I was talking with Frank uh, Gulino, the composer of the next piece, and he mentioned that he had created a brass septet. So uh, a piece for seven players that uh, was so close to a brass quintet that I, I just couldn't help but think, man, what about if you just made that into a brass quintet? And uh, Frank's a very gracious guy, and he, he sort of likes us. Um, by the way, Clipper City Brass Quintet, I don't know, if, uh, maybe some of you may not know this, but the Clipper City is actually uh, a nickname for Baltimore, where we're from. Uh, do we have some Baltimoreans out there? Maybe. Um, I thought I heard some, some ruckus in the back, so I was like. Um, <laughs> and many of us uh, met, actually, at the Peabody Conservatory. Um, I'm still in school. I think I'm the only one. Still working on that. But uh, sorry, Mom and Dad. Um, Frank and I uh, spent a lot of time playing together because Frank is a bass trombonist, and there is a primal bond between tuba and bass trombone. Um, and as it happened, uh, Frank began to compose more and more music for brass instruments that was uh, beginning to become very uh, well known, at least amongst the brass uh, world. Um, if you go on YouTube, this is the age of technology, so everybody's going to be on their phone as soon as I put this mic down. Um, you can actually uh, find some of Frank's music on YouTube. Um, uh, the Effervescent Ballroom is an excellent choice, I suggest it. Um, so Frank's music really has a, a vibrant sound. It has sort of a, a, it's a mix of different styles of music. And audiences are really taken to it. It's, a, it's really been an amazing phenomenon to watch Frank's creations sort of grow. And all of this combined uh, for the culmination of this moment, which was that I find I've been asking Frank for many years, actually, you know, are you going to do a brass quintet? It's like, maybe that would be good. Um, we th we'd kind of like to play. We've got this group, you know. Um, and he finally said yes, uh, created uh, the septet version, and then adapted it for qu brass quintet, and it works beautifully. Um, so this is the world premiere performance of this, of this piece. It feels good to say that on a microphone, let me tell you. World premiere. Um, so you guys are hearing this for the very first time, and we're really pleased with, with how it turned out, and we hopefully Frank will like it. Um, we hope you enjoy it. Legends of the Pacific.
he's a lot taller than I am. Um, <laughs> so we've reached the end of the program, but we hope you enjoyed that. That's really a treat for us to be able to add something new to the repertoire. Uh, there's a lot of brass quintet standards, but we're always looking to grow and expand and add new music to what we get to play. And uh, to, get, to give you guys the opportunity to hear that is really uh, fun for us. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, before we play the last piece, uh, as with every concert, it takes a lot more than just the five of us to put this on. So I just wanted to thank a couple people uh, here at the Kennedy Center. I wanted to thank Margaret, Dempsey, Matthew, Vanessa, and everybody else who's helped us, uh, helped us be here and helped us put on this show. It's been a real treat for us to be able to come down to D.C. We haven't actually gotten to do too much down in this area, so uh, who knows? Maybe this is the start of many things. Um, but, uh, but we really are having a great time um, all day and putting this program together for you. So the last piece that we're going to play is um, one that is quite famous, and I'm sure you've heard at least some of the numbers that we're going to play for you. It's by George Gershwin. Uh, it's called Porgy and It's a suite from his opera Porgy and Bess. Um, and I saw small children in the back, so I'm not going to dive into the subject matter of that particular opera. Um, we'll rather just let you enjoy the music, and uh, hopefully it'll speak for itself. So uh, thank you again so much for coming. It's great to see so many of you here, and uh, this is George, uh, Sweet from George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess.
Thank you.